Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the respected dignitaries, distinguished speakers, honorable participants, and the loving audience, all beautiful people present here from all around the globe. I, Ms. Nada Ratkovic, IAU board member, country director, IAU Croatia, president of Research Center, IAU, welcome you all to the second day of the international conference on the topic all about artificial intelligence. Event to all the educators around the globe organized by International Internship University. I am pleased and honored to present our organizer. International Internship University is a leading virtual education system and global brand configuration, which is the most valuable and trusted worldwide and well reputed in delivering innovative programs. Globally, it is a trusted name for quality training programs and is committed to providing better and virtual education to all the young learners of the globe. IAU is metamorphosing the conventional education system by cutting down the additional costs and providing access to more than 1,000 plus courses and internships to their e-learners across the globe with the help of its 1,000 plus global educators. IAU has formed its four councils, namely Women Entrepreneurs Council, International Student Development Council, International Youth Development Council, International Council of Educators. The main objective behind the councils is to provide support in every respect to the students, to the youths, women entrepreneurs and educators. In a short span of time, IAU has spread its wings in 195 countries and six continents under the strong leadership of its visionary founder. Mr. Piyush Pandit Sir, a committed and inspiring social activist, a passionate educationist from the last two decades providing education to students from various social and cultural backgrounds. He has publicized the world education policy, one education, one foundation, one world. The visionary Piyush Pandit has just one dream, no child should be deprived of education. He's working towards it day and night. He's safeguarding and promoting education and well-being of learners of all times of life. It's commendable. So the sky is the limit for your dedication and hard work, Sir Piyush Pandit. IAU is the change. IAU brings the change and IAU is the revolution. So let's start with the second day, all about AI. Artificial intelligence is a field of computer science concerned with building intelligent machines with capable of the performing tasks that humans typically do. AI has no standard de definition among AI researchers. It is an expensive scientific field that includes various subfields. AI aims to simulate the human way of thinking and allows the machines to repeat our behavior. Today, a leading technology of the current age of the fourth industrial revolution and the human behavior and intelligence into machines of the system. Yesterday, our eminent speakers, our great global speakers make a first day. Our eminent speaker, Dr. Simeon Peter Well from Nigeria deliver a speech on the basics of AI. He introduced, he presents what is AI? What are the tapes of AI? What are he doing in this field? Professor Jeka Jovanovic from Croatia, she delivered a speech and presentation on the programming language called Python. We all know that Python is the most popular programming language used for the artificial intelligence. It has a high level interpreted and language we can say 
Professor Jelka show us what she does with her students in program Python in primary school in seventh and eighth grade, the examples of her work. Respected Professor Adelgid from Nigeria will continue uh, be with us because yesterday he has little network, network issues. So he will continue with the importance of the deep learning. He will introduce the robust structure, the tools and other things from the deep learning. Our respected guest speaker, Ismail Sello from South of Africa, talked about the deep learning. And at the end, yesterday's session, we have an amazing youngest speaker from India, Prajia Mujal, and she presents the topic applications of AI. Today, we also have this topic. So let's see how our guest speaker today will talk about the applications in the AI. We learned yesterday a lot. Today, we are continuing to learning. So let's continue learning today with our today's eminent speakers and educators. First, it's my honor to introduce our first eminent global speaker. She is Professor Dr. Huma Shah. Professor Dr. Huma Shah is coming from Pakistan. She is a full fearing passionate from 14 years. She's working as assistant consultant and professor of the pathology in international university, also associated with many international forums and universities as brand ambassador. She is a dedicated and compassionate medical professional who specializes in her field, pathopsychology, endocrinology, and neurology. Uh, she is a mental health trainer, a managing director consultant uh, from Global Trainer Academy, international transformational speaker, global certified education. Our professor, Dr. Huma Shah, is an amazing uh, person also. So welcome our great professor, Dr. Huma Shah. Dr. Huma Shah, please address our audience with your speech on the topic basics of AI. Welcome. Uh, I, uh, she, uh, she had a problem. I see she's uh, joining us. It, just this minute, she is joining. Uh, Professor Dr. Huma. Professor Dr. Huma, welcome. Professor Dr. Huma, please unmute yourself. Yes, dear Nada, thank you very much. Am I audible to you? Yes, you are. We, we lost you for a few minutes, but you are back. I introduce yeah. you, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me the chance and providing me the platform to speak on a very keen essential topic. My topic is basics of artificial intelligence. I'm going to share my screen to start my presentation now. Thank you. Uh, okay. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, this is Professor Dr. Huma Shah. A warm greetings from Pakistan and a warm greetings uh, from my side. Today, my topic is basics of artificial intelligence. This is not just only for the intelligent thinking, it will give us advanced technology with the human intelligence because this is actually the world of human intelligence with advanced technology. So before starting the basic concepts of artificial intelligence, I'm going to give you some sort of short, brief, but a long lasting introduction. Well, when we talk about the artificial intelligence, it often evokes a world of robots or uh, you can say uh, futuristic technology. However, artificial intelligence is only part of our daily life. If we move around, if we look around. 
An example of this is when shopping online and self-learning, algorithms analyze our behaviors to recommend products adapted to us. You can also take an example of Google Lens, which by uploading an image, identify and links the products that appear into it. In just a click of a second or millisecond, you will get your approach and desired result. Artificial intelligence is the advanced field of computer science dedicated to automating behavior, commonly associated with human intelligence. Like happens with any complex science, many concepts are broken down from it. That's why with this presentation and article, we want to share from the beginning and help you to understand the basics of artificial intelligence. And in this presentation, I will talk about the basics of AI, like machine learning, sample list. I will teach you about what is connection is, what is evolutionary, how can we get through analogizers, and what is basis. Moving towards the presentation of artificial intelligence, First of all, I would like to give you the brief description about the two main basic concepts which arise from artificial learning, which is machine learning and deep learning. Machine learning in the branch of artificial intelligence, it's the main branch that is based on the idea that systems can learn from data, identify the patterns and the main decisions with minimal human interventions. And many, several of the world expert and leading researcher, uh, just take example of Pedro de Mongos, described five tribes, you can say the current of machine learning that he divides based on their interest or origins. But how can they start? I will go and mention each and every point briefly in detail or later. And when we're talking about the deep learning, which is also the main chapter and the leading role in artificial intelligence is derived from the connections approach. It is a subtype of machine learning. Make sure that the deep learning is a subtype of machine learning. Algorithm that rely on neutral networks, I will explain neutral neural networks later on for cascading data, processing the term. Deep refers to the number of layers hidden in neural networks. Now come towards the short but brief and long lasting definitions of the main basic concepts of artificial intelligence. They are based on evolutionary biologies and try to apply genome and DNA evolution principles, claiming that algorithms will evolve and adapt to unknown condition and processes. This is basically the main concepts of artificial intelligence. And through the platform of this international organization, this is the bestest point and target to inaugurate and organize such types of options and uh, uh, top base as a subject in college at or university level as well. Well, moving towards the analogizers that really on psychology and see analogy as a basis of solving problem that may arise at any cost. But when we are talking about symbolist and connectionist, so there are not so much different, but now it's the time to understand the basic concept so our common followers or the students or the beginners can understand because I always use the simple sentences instead of complex sentences. So symbolist is based on logic and philosophy and practice in words deduction. But when we are talking about the connection is, it's sort of a simple connection because is to rely on the neuroscience and try to connect a small brain from what they call back programming to create a neural network that can interpret the data from their interconnections. And you know what the deep learning comes from here, what I mentioned just early before this slide. Now let's talk about the basis. What is this? They are based on the statistics and probability. A logarithm probabilistic interference can learn from this 
sort of bullet point. And it can be helped by learn by trying to calculate how improbable effect is to rule it out as possible solution. Now, now it's a very basic and important point to discuss about the basic concept of artificial intelligence learning. It has a two described learning, which is mainly supervised or semi-supervised. What is unsupervised and what is reinforcement? Before understanding the concept and the basic concept of artificial intelligence, these two concepts must be clear in front of everyone. Like supervised and unsupervised learning learns by receiving a lot of level training data that allows generalizing in new cases. However, unsupervised learning learns by observing, understanding, and extracting patterns directly from the information. And uh, you can say that it is very similar to how we humans think. About semi-supervised and reinforcement learning is all about based on both level and unlevel training data, with the proportion of unlevel data typically being large. But when we are talking about reinforcement learning, it's from the experience through trial error and reward. And this technique is being widely studied since it does not require a large amount of data. Now, now it's a very keen and important point to learn the actual concepts of AI, which is the deep learning versus neural networks. Deep learning drives from the connectionist, what I just mentioned you earlier, approach. It is a subtype of machine learning that rely on neural network for cascading data process. And the term B refers to the number of layers written in the neural networks. You can get so many similar examples and resemblance uh, through the subject of computer science as well. Now come towards the neural networks. It belongs to the family of machine learning logarithms and are inspired by functioning of neurons in our human brain. They all are the connections. You will get so much trustful information through artificial intelligence. They are based on the fact that given some parameters, there is a way to combine them to produce a specific result. The data goes towards a different layer in which a series of learning rules are applied until reaching the last layer, where the results are compared with the correct one. So after discussing all the bullet points of the basic concept of artificial intelligence, now it's very, very much important to discuss and not to forget to talk about the cognitive computing. And finally, uh, some, I cannot say some, several, Several uh, authors mentioned cognitive computing as another variant of artificial intelligence. And research has been proved in now. And it consists of the systems that take uh, on tasks or make specific decisions as assistants or substitute for people. You know why? Because they can handle ambiguity and rudeness and have a high degree of autonomy within the area of the knowledge. So after giving you the short and the basic concepts of artificial intelligence, now it's very important to arise the question that what is the impact of artificial intelligence on our society? So artificial intelligence is basically changing the entire world from making our day-to-day -day life easier with online search recommendation, as I told you before about the Google Lens, voice assistants, assistants and the facial recognition logins to facilitating advance in healthcare, as we have a lot of millions and tons of applications who can identify the pandemic, who can identify the diagnosis, the diseases and different approaches as well, and helping to alleviate the starvation. 
artificial intelligence is truly, truly transformative technology with far reaching effects. Now there is a very good point to be discussed on this stage that the impact of artificial intelligence on society has been largely positive so far. But bringing contribution that have made life easier for us, for the human being, from being able to store and analyze data in multiple industries effectively, to improving our uh, regular routines with virtual and home assistants. But in the future, the benefits of artificial intelligence will surely continue to outweigh its downsides. And AI is developing in a way that is augmented with the, what humans are already doing, make it easier or more effective in a variety of ways. By so far, the biggest benefit of AI is that it's taking care of some of the most tedious, time-consuming, task many industries. It is basically freeing up the humans to do more creative, innovative, valuable, imaginative things that we were before to be doing. And at the last, but not the least, obviously, I would like to share this thought with you that as previously mentioned what i give you the short brief description about the basic concepts and the short brief definitions of the basic concepts of artificial intelligence you know what the artificial intelligence is already here but there is, is still a lot of work to be done there is a lot a lot of work to be done not only in terms of exploiting all its potential to get closer and closer to human intelligence, but also about being able to control its misuse, yes, but also about being able to control its misuse. The goal, the target, is to prevent what Elon Musk predicted. He's a well-known person. Elon Musk predicted that the machine could start a war by publishing fictional news, stealing email uh, accounts, or sending face pre uh, press releases just by manipulating the data. We could say that it already happened. I could say that it already happened, one through uh, artificial intelligence. But we must be aware of the improvement of artificial intelligence which brings to our lives, but without forgetting that we need to use it wisely and control its misuse as well. And I just really hope with this statement that I well enough addressed in the given time frame the basic concepts of artificial intelligence and you will get more and more information and knowledge in the coming uh, topics, which are going to be addressed by our respected remaining speakers. Thank you so very much, my dearest friend and the respected moderator, Nada, uh, for giving me the opportunity to speak on the platform of IIU. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, dear Professor Kuma. Uh, thank you for your great speech. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, it was really great uh, that you uh, uh, make a journey through your article. Uh, through your article, you talk about the basics of artificial, artificial intelligence, uh, introduce the uh, machine learning, the differences between machine learning and deep learning, uh, the cognitive learning, what are the symbols, connections, evolutionaries, analyzers, and the Bayesians? And as you said, at the end, uh, we will have today uh, more speakers who will continue uh, on your speech. Great speech, great knowledge. Thank you. Thank you, dear Professor Dr. Huma Shah. Now, we are going to our next uh, speaker. Our next guest uh, eminent speaker is Dr. Amiga Paul. Our Dr. Amiga Paul is from the country Mauritius. 
she is an amazing woman. She is an amazing educator. She has a physical disability known as cerebral palsy, but she uh, only with 23 years, uh, she has a PhD holder, multi awarder she's an um, event coordinator she's a trainer she's a mentor she's a personal coach our dear and respected dr amiga paul today will present a topic on the deep learning welcome professor paul the iu stage is yours good morning good afternoon and good evening ladies and gentlemen Thank you, Mom, for this wonderful presentation. Uh, just give me one minute. I will start sharing my script. It's great. Yes. So, my topic is, will be what is deep learning. Well, deep learning is a type of machine learning and artificial intelligence that uh, imitate the way humans with certain types of knowledge. Deep learning is an important element of the data science, which includes statistic and predictive modeling. It is extremely beneficial to the scientists who are talks with testing, uh, analyzing, and interpreting large amounts of data. Deep learning makes this process faster and easier. As it's at its simplest, deep learning can be flow as a way to automate predictive analysis. We should also that deep learning is a subfight of machine learning, supporting algorithms that are inspired by the structure and function of the human brain and named as artificial neural network. Also, deep learning is a fine technology behind the technology such as virtual assistance, partial recognition, virus cars, etc. The working of deep learning involves training the data and learning from the experiences. Of course, when we talk about deep learning, it's important to know that it has its advantages and also its disadvantages. Firstly, I will talk a bit about the advantages of deep learning. First, it has the ability to generate new features from the limited available training data sets. It can work on unsupervised learning techniques, helps in generating actionable and reliable search outcomes. It reduces the time required for future engineering. One of the talks that require major time in practicing machine learning. With Continuous training is artificial have become adaptive to change and is able to work on diverse problems. As I said earlier, when something has its advantages, it also has its disadvantages. Now we move on on its disadvantages. With the increasing Popularity, deep learning also has a handful of conflicts that need to be addressed. The complete training process 
we add on the continuous flow of the data, which decreases the scope for improvement in the training process. Also, the cost of computational training significantly increases with an increase in the number of data sets. Also, it has a lack of transparency in force revision, no intermediate steps to provide the arguments for a certain quote. Now I will move on with certain examples that I will be sharing about deep learning. Firstly, uh, we have virtual assistants. Uh, well, for both personality that requires translating the speech and language of the human speech is deep learning. The common example of uh, the virtual assistant of Cortana is a type of uh, virtual assistant that we have. Finally, we have vision for fathers autonomous cars. In order to navigate an autonomous car, there's a pencil, one needs a human work, a human life, experience, and species. Third, we have service and chat box. The continuous interaction of a chat box with human being for providing customer services required strong responses. We have translation. Translating the speech automatically in multiple languages require deep learning provision. This is a helpful machine for police, travelers, and government officials. We move on with facial recognition. You know, facial recognition has many features from being used in the security to the tracking mechanism special use on Facebook. Along with the importance, it has its fair share of issues as well. For example, to recognize the same person with weight, brain, weight, Thus, new hairstyle, etc. How shopping and entertainment. All the shopping applications like we have Amazon and entertainment application like Amazon Prime and Netflix throw our data and buying habits to show the suggestion for future buying and washing. It always comes as a title, you may like to wash or buy. The more data inputted in the deep learning algorithm, the more efficient it becomes in decision making. So when we have pharmaceuticals, customizing medicine based on the particular genome and diseases. Deep learning has widened the scope of such application and has gained the attention of the largest pharmaceutical companies. Besides that, we should know that other deep learning applications of fraud detection, virtual recognition, healthcare, entertainment, and we have many other more uh, applications like uh, uh, deep learning application. So we are going to the end of my, of my presentation on deep learning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, respected Dr. Paul, for your great presentation uh, on that topic. Uh, deep learning. 
uh, you shown us, you explain us what is deep learning, the subfield of machine learning, how machine learning is teaching the teachers in the computing to improve, all about the neurons, about the uh, artificial neural uh, networks, um, what uh, that um, also a con great conclusion that uh, deep learning will soon be as, as far the most, uh, the most important approaches for the uh, machine uh, learning. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your great speech. We are really honored to have you and our great uh, global eminent speakers today here on the second day of the international conference on the topic all about artificial intelligence. Now uh, we are going to, uh, to our next speaker. Uh, our next speaker uh, will be, uh, Professor Mia will join. So our next speaker will be uh, Arpita Ghosh on the topic application of artificial intelligence. Uh, Arpita Ghosh is a certified life coach, soft skills trainer. Uh, her life mission in line is to empower individuals to touch in lives. She has trained uh, not middle and senior management, but also the conducted sessions for school principals, teachers. She used expressive arts make for training models unique and experiential. She's a media professional, prior to her lives calling accounts seller. Miss Gosh is an approved voice of Air and DD Mumbai a corporate filmmaker, screenplay writer for teleseries. Uh, she has also acted in the film Mumbai Central. Uh, her never say no attitude to do and learn gives her the life title of being a poet and author, a TED speaker, a solo traveler, a journalist for a spiritual seeker, which are made uh, for the matters for most of the remains and the labels counseling individuals in the power of the work. She's currently associated with the Christ deemed to be University Lavasa Pune. Uh, many uh, recognitions. She won the Excellence Award 2021 in the field of mental health well-being, an award for the most promising counselor from Asian African Chamber of Commerce and Industry. She is awarded with best practices uh, and she has a co-authored nine books in a span of the nine months and is still counting, writing quotes, poems, life stories, life. So welcome, uh, Miss Arpita Ghosh. Uh, enlighten, us on, uh, enlighten us with your great speech on the application of AI. Thank you. Thank you so much for your kind words and the beautiful introduction. Uh, thanks a lot and welcome to each and every one present over here. In fact, while I was listening to uh, my previous two speakers and the feedback that I got from yesterday's speakers uh, about yesterday's speakers, considering that I'm doing applications of uh, AI, I was just wondering, for our viewers, there may be a little repetitiveness, probably, because uh, somewhere there's a lot of like uh, overlapping. But all the same, I'm going to try and make it as interesting as possible, even if it is the same thing. I'll try my level best. So let me just share the screen. Is this okay? Uh, it isn't a full screen. Uh, click uh, again, please. Okay. All right. Uh, let me just do this one more time. No problem. <laughs> Yesterday on the application of AI, we have our young Indians. So today we have an experienced Indian speaker. <laughs> Okay, uh, somehow I am just not getting this. You click and it want it, it don't want to change. Why not? I see you click that. 
Okay, let me not uh, waste time on this, okay. but I think I'll just get going. So I think we have uh, already looked at, you know, when we are talking about uh, AI, artificial intelligence uh, today. In fact, artificial intelligence we are talking about today, but if you really go to see, artificial intelligence is something which has been there for a very, very long time. It's just that we have not probably understood or realized its presence in our lives. But all the same, when we talk about artificial intelligence today, where do we see it? We are experiencing artificial intelligence every day in our life. And almost daily, when you are uh, traveling from a, one place to another, we are booking our cabs, the Uber, the Ola. So Google Maps is there, which is just giving us, and that is nothing but artificial intelligence. I'm sure all of us over here, the moment, you know, like when we are going through our uh, phone, uh, if you are going through a shopping site and you like something, or if you're going through a travel site, you want to plan your vacation, you're looking at another place, and then you say, okay, I'll come back to it later. The very next moment you jump onto your uh, social media page, be it Facebook, be it uh, Insta, you will find the ads flashing about the destination that you were checking out, about uh, probably the flight tickets to that place, the hotels to that place. All this is nothing but pure artificial intelligence. So like I said, you talk about personalized shopping. Yes, you want to check out jewelry, you want to check out party wear, you want to check out saris at a particular budget, particular colors, it constantly keeps picking up. In fact, I don't know how others feel, but sometimes like, you know, it just does get a little scary. For all the searches that we do on Google, there's somebody watching us. And that is the artificial intelligence. In fact, uh, like Ma'am has just said that, uh, Having done my uh, NLP and you know, everything to do with looking into our mindset and understanding the power of the subconscious mind. And when we talk about artificial intelligence. So if you really go to see the major chunk of our knowledge, which we are really aware of, the wisdom which is there within us, the knowledge which is there within us is in the 90% of the subconscious mind. The 10% of intelligence that we are operating from is all the external intelligence uh, knowledge that we collect from reading, from listening. That's where we collect the 10% uh, knowledge. And from there, we are operating our intelligence. So AI has come up in a big way. And today it is helping us in creating smart content also. When you're looking at smart content, so it will help you with your uh, editing. It will uh, give you the auto suggestion for alternate words. Voice assistance, I mean, again, it's basically nothing but your Alexa, Siri. Siri, of course, is now like, you know, like dormant. It's always Alexa, Alexa, Alexa. So like I mentioned, travel and uh, navigation, it's there to guide you through. There's no way that you can lose your way anywhere. Because, but of course, the most important thing is you need to ensure that you have proper network. Phone apps, again, the moment you get onto any of the phone apps, it is there and it will keep suggesting. You get onto Google Play and it will start telling you that, okay, if you're looking for this particular kind of an app, you already have this installed but look at the other alternatives also. Uh, we've also looked at uh, the facial uh, detection and the recognition part of it. And like I said, text edit, uh, editors and the autocorrect is always there to give you enhanced content material. Now, chatbots are really very interesting. And why I say it is interesting and it's a great way for uh, AI to come into our life because Today, especially post-pandemic, we are kind of, you know, like uh, living in silos. 
working from remotely from our own little we are like you know the other day uh, we are talking about work from home but from work from home also it's come down to work from kitchen table so you know like your dining table gets converted into your workspace too because you're handling your home your kitchen and everything together and uh, chatbots uh, when i'm talking about the chatbots it kind of initiates the conversation so the moment you get on to a site and you know tk you're doing your own searching but the chat box is there to say i'm here to help you and as human beings coming from the background of psychology and as a counselor i think all of us have three basic needs to be taken care of that is to be seen to be heard and to be validated believe me ai does that for us through chat box it's just there to you know let you know i'm around to help you you tell me what you want and i'm there to cater to you and then like i said digital assistants siri alexa are very much there i mean some people are so addicted to alexa and uh, i uh, was really amused when i uh, saw this particular uh, cartoon where uh, after having asked alexa like uh, you know about the weather forecast and alexa says like okay this is what the weather forecast is very genuinely like uh, this gentleman says alexa thank you for giving me the weather cast and you know what alexa responded to that said whatever and that was what we term as artificial indifference so did we hear that right we're talking about artificial intelligence and uh, yes because we feel that artificial intelligence probably lacks emotion but a day will come when we will realize that i mean in fact the work is already going on research is already going on in looking at ai being a part the more artificial intelligence comes up in our day to day life they say emotional intelligence is also going to be equally part of it social media artificial intelligence is just there then again when you look at the uh, electronic payments it has simplified our life so much we don't need to go to the bank it is all taken care of there we keep getting our reminders whatever needs to be done if you have again bank apps on the mobile phone there also you have chat box and it just takes care of every need of yours look at the healthcare industry artificial intelligence has the power to increase the primary care and again this is done through chat box it kind of starts you know talking to you asks you what are your kind of symptoms surgeries today are using artificial intelligence there's virtual nursing assistants so artificial intelligence has literally got into our day to day life in every aspect in fact even if we have to look at the mental health care because mental health awareness is something which i mean even i am also working at and i was actually talking what really interested me i'm sure if you heard my uh, bio that the background i come from you must be wondering is she really going to be talking to us about artificial intelligence what's the background like but i got interested in it because i said ai can be used for mental health awareness and uh, i'm talking to somebody to see how we can really do this because with the help of chat box with the help of uh, artificial intelligence we can actually like you know just do a check in so what if i do not have a friend or family or somebody you know to actually reach out to me and ask me hello how are you doing how are you feeling but maybe through artificial intelligence i can receive a message on my phone just asking me how am i feeling checking on me every 4 hours or maybe every 2 hours and that can really work wonders for me so self driven cars vehicle recognition these are again using your artificial intelligence so when you look at these examples of artificial intelligence it really shows us why ai is talked about everywhere why it is used everywhere so every part of our day is controlled by 
artificial intelligence. It keeps suggesting to us, I mean, it just picks up, picks up intelligently what is our craving, what is our like, you know, choices, our preferences, and it keeps suggesting on the basis of that. So here I would just uh, like to share uh, some of the sites, which like, you know, I mean, are uh, AI tools. And this is really, again, like, you know, if you're a creative person, uh, it really makes creativity a lot more easy for us. So there is this uh, coffee.ai, which helps you in creating your content for your blog. You have a beautiful AI, which will help you to make impactful and beautiful presentations. And mind you, these are free tools. Uh, there is also sportsbox.ai, uh, and this is again powered by artificial and uh, intelligence technology. It's a company and it develops an AI coach mobile for sports and fitness. And of course, it is using the patent pending 3D. So with that, I uh, conclude my session on applications of AI. I think every day we keep discovering newer applications and keep adding that on to our list. So once again, thank you very much, everybody, and uh, have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ghosh, on your wonderful presentation. As you say before you start, that you will bring us new things today on the application uh, of artificial intelligence. I agree 100% because you gave uh, and show us the application in the daily life. The face detection recognition, the text editors and auto correcting, chat bots. Yes, our dear professor, Dr. Huma Shah, is coming also from the health, uh, health branch. And as you said, uh, for, for the uh, mental health for all, the chat bots are great. Social medias, e payments, healthcare. Google Maps, uh, personalized shopping, uh, voice assistance, travel navigation, phone apps. So I think that uh, there is no field, no branch, no part of our life today uh, without artificial intelligence, as you say, and as we are proving today, the second day on the International Conference of artificial intelligence, all about artificial intelligence. Uh, now uh, I'm coming back to our dear Professor Dr. Ambassador Miha. Professor Ambassador, please, uh, uh, will we try with the connection? Is it okay? Do you hear me? Yes, Professor Nada, lovely okay. to hear you. I do just, apologize. Uh, just a minute. But I will introduce our great professor, Dr. Ambassador Mikra Mia. She's coming from South Africa. She's a doctorate and professorship in humanities, education, and humanitarian. She's a global goodwill ambassador. She's a president of the Successor World Academy, South Africa. President in many councils, Chiparco, Global Women's Council, CEO, founder, MEA, company professor of education. She is a representative of our, of our international internship university, global ambassador for peace, director for international youth society, gen member, uh, world global keynote speaker, international lecturer, global ambassador. Uh, she has a, a she has a lot of certificate, certificates in many fields like psychology, financial forensic, forensic, international money, risk management, transformation, a life coach leader, international thought leader, and etc. And today, our dear and respected Professor Dr. Ambassador Miha will introduce and present the topic deep learning. We had already the topic deep learning, but I'm sure that our professor will bring and uh, share with us a new knowledge. Welcome. Professor. Can, can you hear me? 
Yes, yes, we can hear you. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you so much. It's always lovely to see you, Professor Dr. Nada. I'm not going to put this video on, so I seriously apologize that you apologize, otherwise it's going to cut me off again. And I'm hoping while I'm speaking, it's not going to cut off as well. No Unfortunately, problem. you know, we're talking we're talking about artificial artificial intelligence and um right now here in south africa the major crisis that we are facing is exactly just that point the connections the technology hitches the issues that we are having just to stay even they don't work properly um, um every one of them that has been mentioned so far just really becoming problematic as much as we have positive of these different intelligence moments and gadgets and and apps that we can use to make life easier when they don't work really actually become completely dysfunctional as I have just experienced trying to get in. Um, so yes, thank you so much to IAU and thank you for everyone on the platform and thank you for this opportunity. Um, talking about something that is really important, especially in today's life and stage that we're all going through across the globe. Um, you know, and the first thing, obviously we all know what exactly artificial intelligence is. Um, and it being the simulation, I call this simulation of that human experience and intelligence, which is um, what we then adapt into a machine. Um, and like the speaker just before had just said, it's everywhere. And like you just said, it's everywhere. It's in voice recognitions that we use. It's in, um, you know, it's in your print that you're using at a bank nowadays for your safety. It's merely on your device your little mobile device that you're carrying around with you, everything about it. I mean, you can just say, hi, Siri, like my daughter does continuously. Hi, Siri, and Siri speaks back, and that's Google, um, giving her whatever answer she's looking for. That alone is just the intelligence. But again, I want to focus on the fact that, remember, this is an artificial intelligence. It is created. It is thing that is built up as an intelligent form to make some things here for us. And that is the key factor one of the bonuses of knowing a little bit about artificial intelligence is obviously that we need to know that the types in them, we do know that there are four types, and that is from um, the reactive machines to the limited memories. The third and the fourth are actually still being worked on, which is the theory of mind and self-awareness. But um, that, you know, the machine we have, we have spoken on before yesterday and today, where these, you know, these machines are actually created to basically operate and do levels of work that we know humans might just be able to function and do. Um, if you look at what used to be a factory with labor and, and people actually doing the actual manual tasks and what it is today is just a, a machine that's doing and replacing that. Um, when I have to look at that, I look at it and think, well, that machine is now replaced for people's jobs. So that creates a little bit of unemployment. So as much as there's the positive of the machine, there's the negative of the disappointment. Um, so there's always the plus and the minus of everything. And we just need to grow into how to build artificial intelligence at every level so that we're able to make it beneficial for everyone. So that even though a machine might be there, a device might be there, an app might be there, it doesn't allow for people to lose the people essence of what people need to be about. Um, and when you get, for example, Professor Miha. Professor Miha. Uh, we lost Professor Miha again. So we will we will continue. We will continue. Uh, she was talking about the deep learning and the influence of uh, artificial intelligence on the deep learning. Uh, we will see, maybe she will come back uh, again. So uh, let's continue and go to uh, our, uh, our next, uh, next uh, eminent speaker. Our next eminent speaker is Dr. Selvik Ganguly. Dr. Sang Asovi Ganguly has completed his, his PhD in the area of system identification and control form 
Tapar Institute of Engineering and Technology. Uh, he's MT in uh, Mechanotronics Engineering from National Institute of Technical Teachers Training and Research, Calcutta 2008. Before joining academic, he works in the industry for more than two years. He's organizing workshops. Uh, he, he's an expert at giving the lectures for the students, uh, working as a session chair, keynote speaker, conference organizer, reviewer in top IEE, El Xavier and Springer journals. He has nearly 50 Scopus index papers, book chapters and conference papers, national and international. He has granted 17 patents for his contribution in control system. Three of patents has already published and are awaiting the grants. Uh, he has also got his research copyright uh, uh, recently promoted as a senior member of IEE, has been serving as a president of a record prize problems, uh, vice president of Institution of Engineers India. A uh, student chapter to organize several technical events, workshops, competitions, and seminars awarded with the Guru Shin Saman 2020 uh, Icon Education Icon Award, uh, Promising Professor of Engineering uh, and Technical Education. Also received a Research Excellence Award for 2020. Intelligent Green Technologies for Sustainable Smart City is one of his books. Uh, uh, and etc. I think uh, he has guided a total of 28 master's degree students under his supervision. And if we talk about the research, his research interests are including reduction, identification, control, nature inspired, meta heuristic algorithms, electronic devices, and renewable energy applications. I'm sure today that we will have an amazing speech, an amazing pro presentation from the technical side of artificial intelligence. And the topic is called play with data. Let's play with data with our Dr. Selvik. Welcome. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Nada, ma'am. Thank you, uh, IAU, for giving me this opportunity once again to speak before such a wonderful audience and amidst the uh, eminent speakers. So uh, uh, my, uh, just as you rightly introduced me, I can uh, share you the latest uh, information regarding my updates uh, about uh, my background and my uh, publications, my patents and all those things. Uh, so those are a little bit uh, on the technical side, but uh, still I'll try to uh, make my uh, uh, talk uh, interesting enough for the non-technical persons to be enjoyable as well but of course since i'm a person from engineering side and uh, i'm from a core engineering side so definitely some data some uh, figures some facts will be a part of my presentation as well so uh, let's move on let's move on with the topic of play with data uh, so far we were hearing uh, lectures uh, since yesterday uh, with respect to AI applications of AI deep learning, we have entered into uh, some uh, some of the devices. We are uh, hearing about voice assistants and all those things we are having. So let's make a different mood so that we can uh, move on uh, for the data part and uh, how to play with the data, how to deal with the data and how to analyze and clean and filter and all those processes. Over here, we are also introducing one of the key terms of artificial intelligence or one which goes hand in hand with artificial intelligence is the nature inspired algorithms, which is my also my research thrust area. So I'll also point out a few things regarding meta heuristics and I'll count it or I'll, I'll connect it with artificial intelligence as well. So this is how we'll go about in today's session. So first of all, we would like to introduce uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, intersection of machine learning or data or data analysis or likewise, and which branch you are from, or uh, uh, from which background are you from? Are you from computer science background or from, uh, from mathematics or statistics background? Or 
any other domain expert or you're dealing with any uh, software or you are dealing with any data, you come across the data science. The term data is a new fuel for our 21st century. So definitely without data, we cannot move on. And when we are dealing with AI, uh, when we are dealing with uh, computer science or when we are dealing with statistics, obviously we are dealing with data as well. So in the process, we, we are going to uh, take into account these type of uh, uh, things uh, which, which we uh, are discussing for the last two days. So basically we are dealing with AI, but what's the background behind this AI? What we are doing at the back end, at the technical side, and for which we are interrelating your data with the artificial intelligence techniques. So little bit about a flow diagram. So don't get into the technical part of this flow diagram, but basically what we are uh, doing for the data collection first step or the preliminary step in the uh, data science process. So we are uh, collecting some raw data that, that may be clean. So we require some pre-processing. We are not going in over here in this particular discussion into the techniques and how do we clean our data or how do we process our data. And then comes once we process it, uh, we, we, we go in for the selection of the data. So some filtering has to be there, some assimilation or some aggregation must be there. And then we go into the processing of the data where some exploratory analysis is being carried out some visualization of the data is taking place and uh, applying your machine learning techniques or applying basically ai we are able to develop some models right and with the help of the models we are able to make some decision on the topics or whether any uh, revision has to be there with respect to the data filtering or the data cleaning or the pre-processing, whether it is required or not, then we generate certain reports or we uh, make certain visualization of the results. So this is how we go about in a data flow, right? Which we call as the data processing or the flow diagram for the data processing. So a slight introduction to the data that we are making. Now we will slightly introduce to uh, how do we I, do I play with the data? How do I uh, 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 nurture my research with respect to some new coinage, which is closely associated with your AI or uh, uh, we call it machine learning. It's it's go they go hand in hand, which is called meta heuristics. So meta heuristics is a big term. Uh, so uh, as you see over here, several uh, things have been written over here in the slides. Uh, we will not once again follow the technical part because we are to deal with the data and we are to manipulate the data and we are to process the data or we are to nurture the data. So that is what I work upon. So mainly focusing on the uh, different types of meta heuristic techniques, some classifications are already existing, uh, which we call as evolutionary techniques, which we call as the swarm based techniques or some physics based or physical phenomena based or some bio inspired techniques. These are what we call as the nature inspired algorithms. So let us uh, go into a little bit of definition or where does this heuristics or meta heuristics originate from. Uh, heuristics basically means that to find out something by trial and error. So uh, obviously the term meta means uh, which is beyond heuristics or a higher level heuristics, which we call as meta heuristics, which is uh, almost used synonymously uh, along with your uh, heuristic techniques. So there is no such agreed definition or agreed difference between heuristics or meta heuristics. And of course, when we are dealing with anything finding out by trial and error, so we have to use certain random parameters in the algorithms that we are going to discuss. So some of other uh, technical features, there, there are uh, uh, two major components in any meta heuristic techniques or any nature inspired algorithms or bio inspired techniques, mostly I deal with that. So uh, mostly they are uh, the exploration phase and the exploitation phases or which we refer as the diversification where we make the search globally and exploitation means when we are intensifying the search in the local uh, search space. So this is how we go about it. And uh, we need to maintain also a good balance between the two in order to attain the global solution for the different optimization problems. 
so once again i'll go back as i was listening i was a part of the audience i was listening to uh, some uh, lectures or some expert talks on the basics of ai where uh, alan turing was referred alan turing is also the founder or perhaps the first person to use the coinage heuristic methods and this dates back uh, to world war 2 uh in the 60s or 1970s we we first saw the development of genetic algorithms which is one of the most famous uh, evolutionary techniques that we come across and uh, another uh, particular technique was developed in uh, 82 that was simulated annealing uh, so there are several new techniques like uh, ant colony optimization or particle swarm optimization or even your differential evolution uh, algorithms they were also developed in the 90s and uh, with the advent of the 21st century we are finding several uh, uh, new algorithms or they are uh, produced in millions these days every new day you find a new optimization or a nature inspired algorithm which has been developed and that have been nurtured and that have been used in the Uh, a different uh, optimization problems or the design engineering problems so one of the uh, glimpses i'll give about a gray wolf optimizer before we move on into the data part once again and uh, this is a very very popular technique developed by saidali uh, in the year 2014 that led to his phd thesis and it is the one of the most uh, top cited articles these days Uh, amongst the different meta heuristic techniques it is it has crossed probably uh, 6000 or 7000 citations so this is basically based on some leadership hierarchy of the creoles that are found in the northern america and based on their hunting mechanisms as well so if you look at the figure there are four different types of wolves that are classified and the top category is the alpha category that we have identified so those are the king or the leaders of the troop beta is to follow the orders of alpha and delta and uh, omega wolves are your labors they, they are in the troop and this is how they channelize the hunting process so they maintain uh, a leadership hierarchy and also uh, uh, how they will catch up the prey and how will they hunt a prey uh, those are being uh, optimized and they are how how they will trace the path how will they will encircle the prey so these are the part of this particular optimization technique and we have been able to successfully apply it to different engineering problems so uh, before we move on we will go into the data but my 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 earnest request to the audience is that don't go by the uh technical terms present what what we mean to say why we are dealing with such type of data and why we are playing with such type of data that essence must be known to you uh without wasting much of my time i'm showcasing one of my results from my research and uh, this is based on some meta heuristic techniques which we have been able to develop uh during the Uh, last year last to last year and we have been able to showcase but uh, once we are dealing with this heuristic techniques these uh, techniques are stochastic in nature that means uh, they will not produce the same optimal value every time you are experimenting with those uh, any of the benchmark functions so i have taken over here some of the data from one of my uh, benchmark functions that i have uh, explored in my research article so over here we have found the best value best value means it's a minimum value which we are finding worst value means it's a maximum value out of the results which we have experimented on and uh, some averages need to be calculated and also we calculate the standard deviation as well why do we find out the st standard deviation because it will determine the stability of an algo so basically what we are aiming at that when we are dealing with such heuristic or meta heuristic techniques it will be absolutely not calculated uh, it should not be calculated on a single value optimization rather some experimentations will be repeated say 20 runs 30 runs and after that we will 
uh, find out this statistical value. So these are my parametric tests that we usually perform in our research through the meta heuristic techniques. So X, Y, Z problems, you take up, you optimize it, you find out the value, repeat your experiments and uh, make a statistical analysis, uh, analysis so as to conclude that your algorithm or your optimization technique is performing better as compared to a host of techniques over here. We have taken almost 18 to 20 techniques with which we have compared and we have tried to uh, say that our uh, one of our proposed method is performing better than the other techniques in terms of the minimum values being achieved or the av minimum average value being achieved or the least standard deviation achieved in the result. So after this, we will uh, show you some of the results which are from a non-parametric test. So far, we were discussing about the parametric test. Uh, over here, once again, I'm telling you not to concentrate on the data, not to concentrate on the methods that we are describing. We want to know the essence of what we are dealing with. Uh, so over here, uh, whatever values you are seeing, these are basically my p-values. Uh, evolved out of Wilcoxon test. So it is one of the popular uh, non-parametric tests as uh, if you are researching or if you are exploring with data. So obviously some non-parametric analysis has to be carried out to test the significance of your data, to test the significance of your data. So normally we calculate this p-values and whatever results or whatever uh, values you are seeing in the table uh, filled, filled with some uh, data or still filled with some values Basically, those are the p-values which should be ideally be less than 0 0.05 in this particular test. So over here, you will find that if you are referring very few notable values are, uh, say, for example, if you uh, look at the FA column and the GWO CFA column at the very end, you'll find that it's coming out to be 0.2447. So very few values are non-significant. So most of our results, of our research, research results are mostly on the tendency that it is, they are less than 0 0.05. So they are significant. So our method proved to be having producing significant values as compared to my uh, uh, existing techniques or some of the commonly used meta heuristic techniques. So over here, we are focusing on the test of significance of the data, right? So we are we have adopted a particular test, which we call as the Wilcoxon test. And that particular test will tell you whether your data or whether your uh, uh, achieved result or achieved outcomes, they are significantly different as compared to uh, your, your existing techniques or the methods with which you are comparing. Sometimes uh, it, is, it is giving you very good results, but sometimes we have to uh, yet confirm through some uh, more tests, which we call as the kruskal wallis test. This is also another important test in the non-parametric analysis of statistical data, where we, we are concentrating on when we, when we are, say, for example, the blue colored line in the graph that you are seeing is the one which we are testing with some of the other methods. And over here, you'll find that I've compared it with five different methods, the gray line, is overlapping the blue line and the red lines are away from it are significantly different so basically you will find over here what is being reported is that four groups are having mean ranks which are significantly different from the blue group that is a group one so group one is having significant difference with respect to four other methods. So basically this non-parametric test is being carried out when we are dealing with multiple data sets. So as I was comparing with a host of new techniques or host of existing techniques, uh, basically what we are doing, we are trying to analyze that out of say five methods which are compared over here, at least 80% of the data of mine are significant and only 20 percent is showing some overlap which is being indicated with the help of very thin gray line that you may find so in the fifth uh, uh, on on my y-axis if you see that it, it's it's on the fifth line that you may see that there is some overlap of, of it with 
number one line. So over here, we are concluding that almost 80% of our data, which we are obtaining uh, from our experimentation, from our different test studies, uh, are significantly different from the existing techniques. So this is how we are trying to justify and trying to nurture and trying to move up that uh, our proposed techniques or whatever heuristics te techniques which we are developing in our labs, in our uh, experimentations, uh, that we are uh, able to uh, info that they are significantly different as compared to uh, uh, to the existing methods or the parent techniques or sometimes the latest heuristic techniques. So with this, uh, 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 our focus of our discussion was starting with playing with the data. So that's why I showed you some data and uh, tried to make you understand some analysis which relates to parametric analysis as well as non-parametric analysis. And in the process, we have given you a new picture about a coinage which we call as nature inspired techniques or bio inspired techniques there are several new techniques developed each day so obviously you have to keep track on each and every research uh, or every researchers who are significantly contributing to this field so i am just only a very small uh, a part of this particular meta heuristic coinage and with this i'll conclude my lecture on playing with data and dealing with data and how is it closely connected with meta heuristics or how is it closely linked to our theme of discussion all about artificial intelligence. So with this, I conclude my lecture. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, respected Dr. Selvig. Thank you for this uh, amazing presentation. Uh, for giving us uh, the technical part of the meta heuristics, a new coinage. You uh, really uh, put us on a big thinking uh, about the heuristic and meta heuristics because, uh, uh, as you said, uh, the heuristic means to be tried, to be found, uh, and it needs to be and go to a higher level. All these algorithms, uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, many uh, for the first time uh, hear this uh, about the meta heuristic algorithms if they are not in this uh, field, in this field of the engineering. Uh, but you explain it and show us uh, how it is going with the data, with the facts, uh, with the figures, and uh, which uh, what are the major components of the meta heuristic algorithms. You call them uh, diversification and intensification. Uh, what is exploration? What is the focus of exploration? How to make a good uh, balance? Uh, and for uh, for now, uh, well, for us, uh, uh, these numbers are really, uh, really, really uh, significant. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, and we are really honored to have you uh, and for giving us uh, and for sharing us uh, the knowledge because uh, it is very important to hear it uh, from a side. Uh, from the technical side, from a man, uh, from an engineer, from a man who is really uh, with a big experience in this field. Thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome, ma'am. So, what to say? What an amazing and unique event today. The second day of the international conference all about AI, the event for all the educators around the globe organized by International Internship University. First and foremost, I would like to thank our great project director, Dr. Snigta Kadam. Our Dr. Snigta Kadam is our CEO. She is a, uh, she is a uh, president of the Global Academic Affairs in IIU. She's a chief editor uh, in the IIU magazines, a IIU board member. Uh, she is uh, IIU Research Center India presenting. 
thank you, thank you, Dr. Snikta Kadam, the project director for this uh, uh, great, uh, great uh, conference. No words to express our gratitude to our guest speakers for the valuable times for enriching us for the talks. Dr. Huma Shah with the topic of the basic of IAU, Dr. Paul on the deep learning, Professor Ambassador Miha on the deep learning, uh, Ms. Ms. Arpata Ghosh for the application of AI, and Dr. Sowik for the topic play with data. Thank you for the day. The day was amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks to the person behind the success of today's event, who is continuously guiding us, motivating us to put our in the best, our dear founder, Sir Piyush Pandit. Words are not sufficient to express our heartfelt gratitude. Thank you, lovely audience. Thank you, lovely audience on the Facebook for being so supportive, for being a part of our second day for our conferences. You were always, uh, uh, you were always supporting us and, uh, and, and enlightening us and motivating us, inspiring us to do always the best. So artificial intelligence, we uh, didn't mention uh, these days about uh, education, but education is the basis of our lives. We know that it is true that we are start learning and working as soon as we are born and we are stop learning on the day when we die. So it is very important to learn new knowledge as it is important to discard old ones because that are no longer valid because of the circumstances have changed. We see yesterday, we see today, how the circumstances are changing from minute to minute. So IAU is bringing that changes. IAU is always with you. Thank you. See you all tomorrow on the third day where we will enlighten you with new eminent speakers from around the globe. Join us, learn with us, join, learn more about IIU tomorrow, beta change with IIU till tomorrow, stay safe, stay healthy, and let's learn together. We have many new today ideas uh, from our great speakers. We get new knowledge, we get new, uh, Ideas, Dr. Sovik, you you uh, inspire us for the inventions. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Kuma, uh, for the mental health support. Dr. Paul, Mrs. Gosh, uh, for the applications of the AI in each day. Thank you, thank you, and see you tomorrow. Uh, bye bye to all.